although I'm not really going anywhere, I'm just going to Hong Kong for a couple of years, so you'll probably see me again in a couple of years, and I can do a sort of return speech. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise it won't be as long as this one. I didn't really time this properly. So this is a very, very, very famous poem of farewell. It's so understated, but it's so heartbreaking. And it goes like this. Morning rain on Wei City dampens the light dust. Fresh by the travelers in, the willows grow greener and greener. Come, I bid you, sir, empty once more your cup of wine. Empty one more cup of wine, sorry. Once west, once beyond Yang Pass, all your old friends will be gone. It says so little, but it says so much about the, the pain of parting and the aching feeling that, that that's why I just hate saying goodbye. Um, now, I'm going to play this. I think there may be a recitation of the poem. We had two wonderful people reciting the poems in this concert. Um, the English is being recited by John Yu, who's a very famous Chinese-Australian pediatrician. And the Chinese is recited by Richard Rigby, the head of the ANU China Institute. And then the piece of music comes after. The piece of music is played on the Arhu by one of China's leading Arhu players. And it's, it is, if anyone ever had the misconception that classical Chinese music is dull and lacking in fire and emotion, this, I think, should finally disillusion you of that idea. It's, it's the piece of music, I think, that I know that most expresses the um, the intensity of emotion involved in, in saying goodbye. And on you, his mission for Pan Chi. Morning rain on Wei City, this is Johnny. dampens the light dust, fresh by the traveler's inn. Willows grow greener and greener. Come, I bid you, sir, empty one more cup of wine. Once west, once beyond Yang Pass, all your old friends will be gone. This concert will be broadcast on ABC FM in February. So get our chance. Wei Zheng Zhao Yu Yi Qin Chen. Ke She Qin Qin Yu Se Xin. Quan Jun Geng Jin Yi Bei Jiu. Xi Chu Yang Wan. Wu Gu Ren.
I'm not going to play the other piece of music. I think that that is just um, one of the most beautiful recordings of classical music that I've ever heard. And I think it would just spoil it completely to, to, to pollute it with Marlowe's Dust Leap from the Erdo, which is also one of the great works of Western music, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. You can always go ahead and listen to that yourself. Um, and, you know, time is up. Um, I just want to end, and I think the music, the, the music says it all, really. The music is the perfect vehicle for that um, sharing of the deepest levels of the culture. Um, it's always amazed me that classical Indian music has such a wide audience in the West. Classical Japanese music has a wide audience in the West. But Chinese music has been so badly exported that most people just think it's the kind of tinkle tinkle stuff you hear in a restaurant. And indeed, these musicians who came to visit the Chinese uh, China, Australian University, um, Australian National University, excuse me, kind of between universities here, um, they came and stayed a week on campus. And I spent an intense week with them, persuading them that what they needed to do was to strip down their music to its simple, original components. I mean, they didn't want to play a solo oracle piece. They wanted to have a sort of five-piece band with bongos and things, you know. And they really didn't, they thought, but Western audiences aren't interested in that. I said, well, just you wait and see. And the concert was, was nearly all solo instruments, not noisy, percussive um, uh, ensembles that, that uh, basically are not traditional at all in, in, in the performance in China. Um, and uh, by the time we'd, we'd worked on this and rehearsed it and discussed it and so on, um, there was an extraordinary understanding between all of us, between Diana Jan, who was, who was basically helping to, to act as a kind of mediator, and this is a PhD student here at the ANU who's a very fine musician herself, and, and the, the group of musicians um, who, who didn't understand what we were trying to do, but by the end they totally understood it. And the day after the concert, I had lunch with the director of the group and the chief musician, a, a wonderful pipa player. And they said, we totally agree with you. We're going to go back to China now, and we're going to do this. And we're going to, we're going to perform our music as it really is, and the world will then learn to appreciate it. And, and I was just so happy that, that we'd arrived at that um, agreement. Um, and so sort of delighted that the ANU had been able to be the host for these musicians, just as the year before they were the host for a theatre group. And I know that, you know, in, in the years to come, there will be all sorts of other, what, for lack of a better word, one would call cultural activities of, of a Chinese nature going on on campus. We already have a, a calligraphy course, for example. I know there's going to be an art exhibition from Taiwan next year. Um, th these are the things that really give texture and depth to the study of Chinese. And these are the things that I think we should be proud of and that we should just enjoy, you know, and make part of the, uh, of the real uh, substance of Chinese studies at the ANU. With those words, I will thank you very much for being here. Good evening everyone and, and thank you very much for coming tonight. Um, I've only got a few words to say, we'll keep it brief. Um, I'd just like to once again thank you, thank uh, Professor John Minford for tonight's lecture uh, and also for his teaching uh, over the years that he's been at ANU. I think I speak for everyone when I say that you know, we're absolutely amazed every time we walk into a, one of Professor Minford's lectures, uh, whether it be the impromptu, impromptu performance by the, the Chinese um, musicians, um, or one of his um, dissections of um, Chinese erotic paintings, or um, <laughs> looking at Jia Baoyu's um, personal details. Um, I, for my, personally, I find it a, a true pleasure to be taught by you. Um, to take your courses at first year, I think, is just such an amazing thing. And I think there's uh, many students around the world who would be, would be very jealous of us all. Um, so I'd just like to thank you one more time.
I've just got one more brief thank you uh, to, to uh, Darren Boyd who was able to provide the videoing for tonight uh, so people who couldn't make it here can also uh, listen and, and watch your, your lecture. Um, and you mentioned briefly there uh, those, those Akia kids, so I thought I'd just expand on that point. I, I think it's very important uh, and just following an Akia tradition that we give a little spiel at the end of every lecture. Um, so Akia, uh, the Australia China Youth Association, is a, a student-run grassroots national organisation that's uh, dedicated to improving relationships and opportunities for, uh, for people in both Australia and in China. Um, it works through three pillars. You've got the careers, uh, people to people exchange, and education. And we've put on uh, lectures this year which have been very well attended, but I'd say this one takes the cake. Um, so, congratulations, you've beaten Professor Vivian Bath, uh, a federal MP, um, <laughs> as well as several other ANU academics. Um, we are we're always willing to get more people involved in ACIA. Um, there's a mailing list outside, so please sign up if you're not already receiving uh, the newsletter. Um, and come and say hi and get more involved. Um, just like to um, present a, a small gift. Um, we know that you, from snippets in lectures, that you uh, lived in France and, and worked at Vineyard there. Um, so I think uh, we left it up to Nick to decide on a present for you, so I hope it suffices. <laughs> We've also just got a, a book outside where you can write messages to Professor Minford. Um, so that's just on the table on the right hand side. It's a red book there next to the mailing list. So I'll do both at the same time. And there's um, food and snacks outside. So I'll leave it at that. Um, and just like to.